Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to write for loops inside Playtech. I'm going to show you three different packages in order to do that. They are very similar, but they have slightly different functionalities and they have slightly different syntax. So we're going to be seeing all of them and here are some examples of what we can get. We can write list, we can write list of variables, we can have list that have a specific increment, so they jump from 6 to 9 to 12. We can also have do the same with float numbers. And we can also have conditional formatting with an if statement. As you can see here, I'm showing that if this number is smaller or bigger than another value. Then we are going to be using four loops to create figures and to add figures to our document. As you can see, these three figures here, I'm actually, you cannot see it at the moment, but these three figures were actually created using a for loop. And we are going to be using also for loops to add sub figures to our document, like the one you can see here on my screen. And also we are going to be able to add a specific caption to the figure if you want to. At the end, I'm going to be showing you also how to use Python to actually write some later code because it might be easier to write later code inside Python. But also I'm going to be showing you how to create this beautiful uh, figure with the TK Zeta package. As usual, in my video, you can find, you can skip between sections with the timeline below to help you. I have also added this guide on my website, which is basically the transcript of this video. So you can also follow along and you can find all the code that I'm going to be using in this video online on my website. You can find a link down in the video description below, which is going to redirect you to this page. And while you are here, you can also look at my latest masterclass or how to get started or why to use LaTeX. To compile the code in this video, we're going to be using PyCharm and I have all the code here on my local computer inside this folder. And I also have a subfolder which contains all my figures which are going to be importing in our LaTeX document. The very important thing here to remember is that you can compile this document both also with VS Code, Text maker or with overlay for line. My preferred choice is PyCharm, but you can use any tool that you want. So let's start, and I'm going to be commenting out all the code I've written, and then we're going to go step by step and see how we can write for loops. So the first way to create a for loop is to use the PGF for package that I've imported here in my document preamble. The command is very simple because we have a for each command followed by i, which is going to be the variable that we are going to be looping through. And here we have the numbers from which we want to start and we want to end. So here we are looping from 1 to 5 we can, with an increment of 1. And here within the curly braces, we are actually printing that variable in the text, followed by a comma. Here, of course, you don't have to have just a comma, but you can also say a variable or whatever you want. So you can change that and you can see that is going to appear in the text. If you see that there is no space between the variable, as you can see here on my right, and the uh, number, you can wrap this number here into a dollar sign. And this is going to kind of create the math uh, way. So have a space between the number and the text that is followed after. With the for each package, we are not limited to have uh, like a set of uh, variables that increment by one, but we can also specify a list of variables that we want to loop through. So here, for example, I have a list of fruits that I want to print into my document. If I remove these uh, backslashes, then eventually our code should be all in one line, because this is how we write in LaTeX. And of course here fruit is uh, optional, like you can call it x, you can call it fruit. This is just giving a meaningful name to the variable, but you can change it as you like. The second package that I want to show you is called for loop. It's very similar to the previous one. However, the notation is a little bit different. First of all, we need to define a new counter here, which you're going to be saying i. Then we are saying that i goes from one to a value that is less than five. So here we can see that we have a for loop, so it's going to be printing up to four because we have one, two, three, and four because we have saying that it has to be smaller than five. Of course, you can change these and you can say smaller than 10 and this is going to print all the number up to nine. 
And this is the for loop with the for loop package. Another package that I'm going to be introducing, which is the last one, is called multi-do. Multi-do is nice because very simply allows us to print whatever we want, but using increment. So here we are starting from six, and then we are incrementing by three each time, and we are going to be doing this five times. So again, it's a different notation, and sometimes you may find one package that is more useful or more handy for that specific application. So here you can see that I'm printing 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18, 6, 15, 18, because we are incrementing by 3 5 times. But of course, if I change this to do 2, then eventually we're going to have only 6, which is the starting point, and 9. The same thing can be done with floats. The only thing which is important that I also didn't mention before here is important what is the variable name. So i stands for integer and n stands for numbers. So here we can do the same with floats, so we can increment by 0.35 as long as we call this variable n, because it's very important. We can also nest inside the multi-do command an if-then-else statement. In order to use the if-then-else statement, we need the for loop package, so we need to make sure we have it in the preamble. So here we're going to be looping through i, starting from 1, incrementing y1, and going up to 10 times. What we're going to be printing is the value of i, which is the number that you can see here, and then we're going to be saying a condition with if then else. So this is the condition, so if i is smaller than 5, okay, we are going to be printing smaller. Otherwise, we're going to be printing bigger. It's a bit odd here because it's actually saying five is bigger than five, which makes no sense. But it's because I didn't write a nice condition because I'm saying i is smaller than five, which is false because five is not smaller than five, is equal to five, and therefore I am printing bigger, okay? So that's the reason why you see bigger over there. But you can write whichever condition you want and you can mix the condition with text which I think is very nice in some cases. You can also use the multi-do package and the for loop package or for each package to add figures into your document. So here in my directory, I have a subdirectory with figure one, two, and three, and I want to now import them in my document rather than having to write the figure environment three times because it's very tedious. So how can I do that? I can simply use this command here. So we loop three times with the multi-do command and we run from one to three because we increment by one. Then we have the figure environment. We want the figure to be center. And now we have the include graphic and we're going to be seeing that the graphic has to be half of the text width with this option here. Here we're going to be grabbing the figure from the figures folder. And then we're going to be seeing first figure one, figure two and figure three. The caption is also going to be a function of the i and as well as the label. So label will be figure one, two, and three. So if I recompile this document, I'm going to get an error because we have not yet imported the graphic X package. So here, if I go here, you can see something weird, but that makes sense. Let me also import the caption and subcaption packages because you are going to be needing them later. So if I recompile the document, now you should be able to see the figure into your document, and here they are. One, two, and three. Now I want to show you that you can do exactly the same as what we did before with the multi-do command, but with the for each package. In this case, of course, the notation is different, so we're going to be looping from i in this kind of array, in this range, from one to three, and we're going to be using the same command. Now I need to kind of remove these figures here, so let me remove them both, because otherwise yeah, I'm going to have duplicate labels here, so because I'm using the same label for the figures and I'm getting an error otherwise, so let me remove all the figures so there is no figures in page two. So if I recompile this document, now we are going to be seeing all our figures. So the reason why we're getting an error actually is because I forgot before I commented out this PGF4 where the for loop, the for each loop we're getting it from. And therefore we are of course getting an error. But if now I import the package, everything is showing equally as when we were doing the multi-do command. So here we have all our figure, and of course, as if you were writing these figures into your document, you can also reference them. So here I'm referencing the figures, and I can see I shown in figure two, one, two, three. Despite we didn't really write this label, but this label was written automatically by the for each command. Another thing that I want to show you is that instead of having figures, 
you can have now the four each inside the figure environment, and then you can create subfigures. So placeholder text here, we wrap everything in a begin figure environment, then we have the for each, which you already seen it. And this is exactly as before, but this time we have sub figure. And then here we are importing the figure, we are adding a caption, and we are showing our results, and we can see everything here on our screen. This, this approach is great. However, as you can see, you can see one limitation. You need to name your figure with uh, an incremental number. So one to three to five to ten. If you start having different names for the figures, then you start having some troubles. So we can solve that problem as we did before with the fruit. So here, instead of using this approach, we are going to be defining the names here at the top. So we're going to see figure one, figure two, figure three. And here in my directory, I also have another figure called test. So this is the array that we want to loop through. And then we are going to be parsing the name from the array with the for each command. And then we're going to be passing this name as the figure name. So if now I recompile this document, then we should be able to see new sub figures, which are here uh, at the end of our document. And we also have the test figure because we are able to loop also through this one. The negative side of this approach is that unfortunately you need to write all the list of figures that you want to import into your document, which again can be tedious. And that's why I'm going to be showing you in a second later on with Python how to solve this problem. And finally, with this same approach, we also have more flexibility because we can also specify the caption for each specific figure. So here, not only in this array, we are specifying the figures, but inside each curly braces, we are actually adding a forward slash, and here we are also passing the caption or the subcaption. So here we are extracting these two information. We are telling that name forward slash subcaption. And then here we pass the in the include graphic the name of the figure, but in the caption we pass the subcaption. And this is very handy because now we are going to have different subcaptions, as you can see here, for my figures, which we couldn't do it before. Here is what I want to show you later on with Python. And now I want to show you also very briefly something very cool that you can also do with the for loop package. But before we do that, we need to import a few more packages. So here we can import the X color, just if you want to have specific color. It's not going to be really needed in this example, but just to let you know. And then we have the TKZ package to create nice charts and the graph package. I'm going to be recompiling and I'm going to go very quickly over that because it becomes very complex very quickly. But we can create this beautiful matrix. We can create this one, which is just these dots. And I also want to show you how you can use the TKZ package to simplify that. So very quickly, we can go through all these commands. So here we have a begin figure environment. Then we have the centering, which is simple. And then we start a begin TKZ picture. And then here we specify the node. So this is the node and the node style, which is a circle filled with gray. No, sorry, filled with teal, this color here. And don't worry about the how it's rendered here with another PDF reader rendered perfectly. So here in the first part of the command, we use a for each to actually display the nodes. And this is the command. So we're displaying the nodes and we are specifying what to write inside the node and we are specifying the location of the nodes. And then with this for each command, we are going to be drawing all the arrows. So the first two commands are for the vertical and the horizontal arrows. And the second command, so this one here, is for the diagonal one. An important thing that I didn't mention before is this count. So we can use this count to extract the iteration number, so the enumerator, like the index of the iteration. So what does it mean? So x in the first iteration is going to be 0 because we pass 0. But then the counter will be one because it's the first round of iteration. So this is useful to create this diagonal line because uh, we're going to have that x is zero in the first round of the iteration, but uh, y i, which is the index of the iteration, is going to be one. We can also have this um, matrix here, which is similar to the previous one. But here we can also see that um, in a way it's simpler because we are looping through a number, which is 25. We could also change that to 16. But then if you change to 16, unfortunately, you need to change these kind of manually and reduce the index by one. So this is going to be creating a matrix of 16 dots. And here we have a different style. So we have a dark style. We have the iteration, so 16 dots in the matrix. And here we have a new concept, a new command that we haven't seen before, which is rounds to the nearest 
integer. And again, as I told you, it can get pretty complicated pretty soon. So I just want to show you that you can basically achieve the same with the graph command, which this is just the node that we want to be printing, so just the style. And this is what we want to graph, so it's a grid placement. And here we just have to specify the number of points. So if you say 25, it's going to create the matrix for us. And in a way, it's much easier to handle this one. And finally, I want to show you something like this, where we have with this graph package, again, we can actually show in a line all the numbers, and then each one is connected with an arrow. Again, this video is not about the ticket Z package, but I wanted to show you with a for loop how you can also create this very complex chart. One final thing that I want to show you before this video ends is how to do, um, how to import figures basically in LaTeX using Python. So I'm going to be switching to the Python file that I created for you. And uh, I'm going to be just uh, opening it here and let's open it in, uh, in a full screen. So here at the top, I basically have just the command that creates these uh, three figures. And uh, let me just run this one. So I've deleted the figure. If I run this one, you should be able to see that the figure gets uh, get generated for me. And uh, reload from disk. Now you can see figure one, figure two, and figure three. Perfect. Then we create the test figure, which is just a line. And uh, this is how it looks like. And here I have two options that I've showed you. One is to create sub figures, and I wanted to create two styles. So I'll show you two styles. So one is to create the sub figures to include in the document, and the other one is how to add the figure by looping through the file names. So let me go back into the main.txt file. We are going to be commenting everything out, uh, aside from the preamble, because we want to keep uh, the import of the packages. So let me comment everything out. Let me show you what we get. So here is what we get uh, with the Python code. So I just have to uncomment this one. And let me just run this code for you. Perfect. So we can see that we can get all the figures in our document as we had before with the for loop. And we also have the sub figures. So you might wonder, why do you go through all this trouble to do the same thing that you can do within LaTeX, but you're doing it with Python? So for me, at least in my opinion, it's easier to write Python code than LaTeX code. And also you have much more flexibility because here in the first one, when I import the figures, what I'm doing is I'm creating this placeholder file that is going to be in the figures subfolder directory, but we're going to be calling subfigure.txt and we're going to be importing later on into the main document. What we're going to be doing is we are looping through all the figures that we have in our subdirectory here, and we are selecting all the files that basically they have a PNG extension. Then basically in within that file, we loop through and we create iteratively subfigures. And the only element that we need to pass is basically this figure value here, because this is the file that we need to import, and that's it. And this is what we have in, inside include graphic. This is very beneficial because, uh, as I'm showing in the, in the second example, allow us, for instance, to be more selective. Maybe we don't want to open all uh, the figures, but we want to open all the figures and add them to that file that start with the fig, okay? Not, we want to exclude the text. So in this case, we can have glob.glob, .glob, which is going to be looping, uh, through all the figures with the extension of fig. And then we're going to be writing to this file, which in this case, we are going to be calling figures.txt. And what this, file, this function uh, accepts is the figure name, because of course we need to import this inside include graphics, but also the size of the figure. So let me delete these two files and let me show you what happens. So I need to just delete this second file as well. Perfect, so the files are, uh, are gone. So if I run this command here, this is going to be creating those two files inside here. So I reload from disk. So here we have the three figures because we excluded the test and here we have the sub figure. So if I go in main.txt, I can just import these two files, one and two. And I can run the command and I see all my uh, beautiful output. But the advantage of using LaTeX, you know, Python inside the, to generate this file is that if now I don't want to be so selective, I want to have also the test figure, 
uh, because that's also, I want to have all the file details in PNG displayed in LaTeX. I just simply rerun this function, then I go to the figures, and now we should be able to see that we also have test inside this file. So when I'm going to be running the main.txt file, I'm going to be seeing that figure as well, because now we also have test imported and is actually appearing here at the beginning of the document. So two options. I mean, you can use for loops inside LaTeX or you can use them and write some LaTeX snippets inside um, Python. And in my opinion, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. I really hope you like this video and I really hope it was useful for you and you learned something new. You learned how to write for loops inside LaTeX. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It really means a lot to me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my best to answer all your questions. If you think you have learned something and if you think that uh, this video was useful, please consider supporting this uh, channel by buying me a coffee or supporting me on Patreon or becoming a member here on YouTube. This channel does not have any ads, so it's all funded by you and people who want to support me. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day and see you in the next video.